Assalamu alaikum everyone, my name is Fatima bint Mustafa and today I will be speaking on the 8th chapter, Safety and Security. As with most things, we have to be safe and secure while using the internet. There are two types of risks we could encounter while on our devices. These are health risks and security risks. We will begin by addressing the health risks first. Starting off with the back and neck pain. This can be caused by sitting in front of the computer for long periods of time in the same position. You can prevent this from happening by using adjustable chairs to fix your posture or by using adjustable screens. Secondly, we have the repetitive strain injury, or RSI for short. This is due to damage to fingers and wrists by continuous use of a keyboard or clicking on a mouse. This can be prevented by taking regular breaks, using special keyboards and mouses, and using voice-activated software. Next, we have the eye strain, caused by looking at the computer for a long time or with incorrect lighting in the room. To prevent this, you can use a less flickering screen or an anti-glare screen. Headaches are tied to eye strains. They are due to spending too much time looking at a screen. You can prevent this by keeping some distance between your eyes and the screen. Fixing the lighting and using a filter monitor or glasses can also help. Lastly, there is the ozone irritation, which is caused by laser printers. It can be prevented by using proper ventilation, using an inkjet printer, or housing the laser printer in a separate room. Now, we move on to safety risks. Firstly, we have electrocution. This can be caused when a drink is spilled on the computer device or when one touches an electrical wire or socket. You can prevent it by using a residual current breaker or RCB for short. Keeping drinks near the computer should also be avoided and you should check the wire insulation regularly. Next, trailing wire is when the wires of all the devices are all over the place which may cause people to trip over them or even be electrocuted. This can be avoided by using wireless connections or organizing and tucking the wires somewhere. Heavy equipment can also be dangerous at times. For example, there is a risk that a heavy printer will fall on someone. However, these situations can be prevented by using strong desks to support the equipment and by placing it in the middle as the risk of it falling is higher if it is placed in the corner. Lastly, an electrical oversurge can cause a fire risk. An oversurge may happen when too many devices are plugged in at once. It can be prevented by using low voltage devices and not overloading the sockets. We move on to our next subtopic, e-safety. E-safety is the safety when using the internet, which means the safekeeping of personal data. Personal data is any data concerning a person which can be used to identify them. Personal data can be sensitive data such as the ethnic group, political view, religion, or criminal activity. There are many different ways people could get a hold of our data. The first example is hacking. Hacking is the act of gaining unauthorized access to a computer system which can then lead to identity theft or misuse of information. The data can also be deleted, changed, or corrupted. As like many other things, there are measures we can take to prevent this. We can use firewalls, strong passwords, and intrusion detecting software among many others. Next on this list is phishing. Phishing is when a legitimate looking email is sent with an attachment or a link. When the receiver presses the link, they are redirected to a bogus website, which gives the creator of the scam email access to your bank account and personal data. This can, however, be prevented by being cautious when opening unknown emails and avoid clicking on random links. There are two types of phishing. Smishing and wishing. Smishing is SMS phishing. This is when a scammer uses an SMS to send out fake messages to fool the people. Wishing is voicemail phishing. It involves using the voicemail to trick the user to establish a conversation with them. Farming is similar to phishing. This is a malicious code installed on a user's computer or web server. This code redirects them into a fake website. 
the user does not have to take any action for farming to work. Farming can be prevented by using anti-spyware software. Users should also be alert at all times in case anything like this happens. Next is spyware and key logging software. These are software that gather data by monitoring the key presses on the user's keyboard. The gathered data is sent back to the creator of the spyware. They can then change the user's default browser and install cookies. This can be prevented by using anti-spyware software and using touchscreen technology as it is sometimes better than a keyboard. Next, let us talk about malware types. The first type is the virus. A virus is a program code which can replicate itself with the intention of deleting or corrupting files on a computer. It can also cause the computer to crash or stop functioning. You can prevent viruses by installing antivirus software, not opening or being cautious when opening unknown sources. Most importantly, you must always be careful when dealing with an unknown sender. Secondly, spam is often referred to as junk email. It is the unwanted emails that are sent in bulk through the internet or messaging systems. These can be prevented by using a spam email filter, avoid signing up for mailing lists, and unsubscribe from any mailing list you are unaware of. Next on the list is cookies. Cookies are small files or codes that are stored on a user's computer. They are sent by web server and the data gathered forms an anonymous user profile. Cookies are used to store users' preferences while surfing through the internet. However, some people use it for bad purposes. Lastly, there's the firewall. A firewall can either be software or hardware. It sits between the user's computer and the external network. It checks both incoming and outgoing traffic and warns the user of any potential threats. Firewall can also prevent hackers from getting access to the system. There are two main types of security protocols, SSL and TLS. SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. It allows data to be sent and received securely over the internet. The SSL sign on a web page is the HTTPS padlock. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. This is similar to SSL and is made to provide encryption, authenticity, and data integrity. What is encryption? Encryption is used to protect data against hacking or illegal access. It cannot prevent hacking, but it makes the data meaningless even if the hacker accesses it. When a message undergoes encryption, it becomes cipher. Only the sender and the receiver can use the encryption key to decode the cipher. With that, we have finished Chapter 8, Safety and Security. Thank you for listening and I hope you have learned something of importance in this chapter.